wants to call me retarded. She said I dressed like a slut. Once he questioned my integrity. It was like she wanted to make an example of me. He always called on me, but he knew I didn't know the answer. Because the first time I was exposed to the list was when we, um, we saw it as a presentation at a, a workshop that Jane and Sandy and I went to. And it was being presented by the presenter there, something that she had found. It was that probably most of us do these behaviors just because a lot of them probably come naturally and we don't think about them. We don't think all the time that what our actions or words are really doing to others. If, if a person's a teacher, they're not there to bully kids, they're there to teach kids. And uh, when I looked at the list, uh, it was pretty powerful because I thought, oh my gosh, there I am, about four, four places automatically. These things that we do every day, Sometimes they're so um, quiet and you don't even realize that you're doing them. And then when they're put on paper and you read them, it's like, oh my gosh, there's me and there's me and I did that yesterday and oh, I just did that today. Uh, I was reading through and I just kind of took a step back and said to myself, you know, I, I do these things. Um, not on purpose, you know, every now and again I'll catch myself where I actually am bullying the students. And I don't mean to, but uh, I know it's something I probably need to work on a little bit. You know, I guess it just kind of opened my eyes to the fact that, you know, I, I may bully uh, here and there without even realizing it because it's just kind of the way I've grown up and I just think as a society we've grown up. I was quite surprised that I have been guilty of saying or being the bully on the, uh, on the end of the student and they could see me, uh, I could see myself kind of getting embarrassed. I mean, and nobody else was reading that list with me. But I was quite embarrassed of my behavior at times and that I thought uh, more than one of those was, was me. You get to a frustration level with that person and instead of pulling them to, a so to the side, um, I think the natural thing that we do is, you know what, I'm just going to lash, I'm so tired of it, I'm fed up to hear, so I'm just going to lash out in front of the class. And, and sometimes, uh, for me, it's a natural reaction. Um, the one thing they hate to hear is shut up. Shut your mouth or shut up. And so often, that's what wants, that's what wants to come out of our mouths. Shut up! And you get nowhere with that. Um, and if we're trying to model behavior that is conducive to not bullying in the classroom, we gotta stop. Uh, I have a problem with sarcasm. I mean, I try to be humorous about things and when I respond to students, I try to kind of joke around to kind of ease the situation, but I know sometimes my actions are inappropriate in my responses to them and comes across more sarcastic. And some kids can handle it and some kids can't, so I need to try to curb, you know, curb my behavior on how I respond to kids and maybe try to diffuse the situation in a better way. We chose education for a reason, to be a model for our students, and sometimes if we could model the correct behavior, at times you could get a good response out of your students. Here in, in Fox, we get a lot of siblings, and I remember one time making a comment to a girl about, you know, I'm really surprised that you would behave this way. Your sister is and was such and such, and you know, she was really conscientious, conscientious about her grades and always behaved, and I just really thought you would be more like that. And now that I look back and think about it, the look on her face, she just totally demoralized that I would do that to her, that I couldn't see her just as the person that she is. For some of our kids, our classroom is the only safe place they have.
have a student that has been pretty lazy in my class and makes a lot of excuses, doesn't bring his materials to class, and we kind of had a little run-in. Um, he asked me why I was doing so poorly, and I told him why, as far as showing him his grades, and then he wanted to argue with me, and then we kind of got into it, and I, I was basically putting him in his place as far as, well, you're an unsuccessful student, and this is how you are in all your classes, and I probably shouldn't have done that. I probably should have said, well, this is what we need to do in order to make this work. But once we can you know, admit that you know, we need to work on this, um, that's, that's the biggest step, in my opinion, is, is realizing that we're doing something wrong. Um, I had a student in class that would cause a lot of problems, didn't do work. Um, I felt like I was kind of close to him though because I had him in football and uh, he had a gap between his teeth so sometimes when he would cause trouble in class I would make fun of his gap between his teeth and kind of humiliate him a little bit, let him know that I was in charge and after taking a step back later realizing that I was bullying him in class. If we're bullying, they're going to bully. If they see us that we're not doing it in class, they're going to start to model that behavior. And sometimes in order to maintain control of the class, in order to make sure you have the students' respect so that they take what you're doing seriously and so they take the, what you're doing in class seriously and so they take you seriously, you have to remind them sometimes, you know, darn it, I'm the teacher, you're the student, this is the system we have in place to make it work. And you can make, you can make that relationship clear without having to resort to, to yelling at that particular student in front of the entire class. Unfortunately, um, sometimes teachers use those things as sort of classroom management yeah. techniques because they think uh, maintaining control of the classroom in order to get certain things done is more important than anything else. Uh, the kid didn't want to run the track. We had to run a couple laps. Um, and uh, I don't know, we was kind of arguing back and forth. and. As we were walking in, you know, he said something that probably got under my skin and I was just getting tired of listening to him. I told him, I was like, well, uh, you know, uh, you're kind of big, so that's probably why you need to run. And then he got, he got pretty mad. It was, it was in probably different terms, you know, I can't remember the exact words, but he got pretty angry about that and, you know, almost, you know, he started yelling at me and stuff. And this other teacher had to, uh, you know, hold him back, basically. And afterwards, you know, I thought, well, those probably weren't the correct words to say to a student because, you know, I'm impacting this kid's life. No matter how ignorant he's going to be or defiant he's going to be, you know, I, I still should be more of an adult and not say, you know, silly things like that that can hurt a kid's feelings. Sometimes in the classes I have, I get several people that have lots of behavior problems and I have a tendency to blame that on the class or mismanagement of the class on the students instead of what could I do better to take charge of this situation. If we model the appropriate behavior, they're more likely to do that behavior also. The students watch what we do, and if we behave a certain way, then it tells the students that it's okay for them to behave that way. And I think we have to set the climate. We have to be kind to one another as staff and let the students see it. And we gotta stop. I mean, we, we have to almost reinvent our personalities, which is, man, that's tough to do. You know, I'm going to slip up on occasion. I'm not going to say that I won't, but I am going to try to maybe be more conscientious about not doing it. So if we can make the awareness out there to teachers, maybe they'll catch themselves. And once we can, you know, admit that you know we need to work on this, um, that's that's the biggest step in my opinion is, is realizing that we're doing something wrong. If we model the appropriate behavior, they're more likely to do that behavior also. We need to try to set a proper example for students at all times and exactly how to behave. 
Our kids deserve my best. If it is to be, it's got to be up to me. It is our job. I want to make a difference. Tell me if you see me do this. Our kids deserve our best. I promise to look at myself. I will. I will. We will. It starts with us.